So far, we've seen how the model behaves with a completely fixed price. Uh, we've also seen how it behaved with a bargain price, uh, which we, we can see as uh, a, a flexible price in that it absorbs all demand and supply shocks to keep uh, tightness constant. So now let's look at what happens when you have a rigid price. Uh, so we'll define a rigid price, which will be a price that moves in the direction of the flexible price, but just not as much as a flexible price would. And uh, then we're going to look at the comparative statics under the rigid price. Um, so first we have to define a rigid price. So we have to define a price norm that captures this idea of rigid price. So at a high level, what we want to do when we use a rigid price, um, so we want a price that moves in direction of a flexible uh, price. And so an example of a flexible price is a uh, bargain, bargain price, but less uh, the direction of the price, but less than it. Uh, so here is how we're going to do it. Rigid price norm. So our price norm is going to be P N. So that's going to be the price norm. It's going to be equal to. So we start from a, a, a flexible price. So you, you remember that in our um, bargain price, we had first a term that was key epsilon times mu uh, over k. And this is why shocks to aggregate demand and aggregate supply were completely absorbed is because um, the bargain price was moving in proportion to this expression so that in the aggregate demand curve, all shocks to demand and supply were absorbed uh, through the shocks in the price. So here our price norm, uh, we'll have this, but the fluctuation of this block that depends on demand and supply. So here you recognize these are basically 80 parameters and these are AS uh, parameter, we'll assume that they move just a bit less. So what we'll do is that we'll take this block and then we'll put it, we'll put an exponent sigma. And in addition, we'll add a scalar to our price norm so that the price level can be at different, you know, can be, the price can be centered around whatever different level. So we'll have P, uh, P0. And what's key is that the sigma, the parameter sigma, it can be uh, it can be zero. If the parameter sigma is zero, um, then you know this whole block disappears, and then the price norm is just going to be fixed, and it can go all the way to one, but not being one. Uh, so this is what is a rigid uh, price norm. And so we have special case sigma equal zero, price is fixed, because in that case Pn is just equal to P0. <coughs> oh, and here I should say P0 is just a parameter that's positive. Uh, so we have this special case, and then notice that the case in which sigma equal uh, one which we do not consider here, uh, that would be a case in which your price is flexible. And in fact, uh, in the special case in, in which P0 is equal to one minus beta epsilon minus one, over f of two minus one beta over one minus beta. So in that specific case, uh, so in the general case, sigma equal one, your price is flexible. If on top of it, your uh, the scaling parameter P0 is equal to what I wrote here, then, uh, then the price 
is uh, the surplus sharing price. But if P0 is at a different level, well, you know, then it's not the surplus sharing price. Or another way to say it is that you can always find a beta, uh, you can find a beta that generates, uh, that leads you to this P0, and then it will be the surplus sharing price for that specific beta, that specific bargaining power. So price is surplus sharing pr price, I should say, for uh, parameter beta. Okay, but here we do not consider the the, the case of the flexible price. Uh, we exclude that because here we are looking at uh, rigid prices. So the key assumption that sigma is strictly less than one and possibly uh, could be possibly zero. So this is our rigid price norm. Okay, so here we'll see the price is going to move with demand and supply parameter, but less than it would uh, under the flexible price. So that's our definition. And then, so what are going? What are the comparative statics going to be? Well, we can see it actually pretty quickly. Uh, by going back to uh, the equilibrium condition. So the equilibrium condition, we know that it's uh, y d x p is equal to y s of x. So now if I rewrite it, it's key epsilon 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1 times mu over p is equal to f of x times k, right? And actually, a useful uh, way to rewrite our. Uh, we're going to, so here we're starting from the solution equation. And also, a useful way to write our supply is equal to demand conditions a solution equation is to separate terms that depend on tightness and the other. So if we do that, we get key epsilon times mu over k times 1 over p is equal to f of x times 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1. So here I've separated. You can see here that on the on right hand side, I have things that depend on x. And on the left hand side, I have my price as well as um, the demand and supply parameters. Okay, so now, so this is for uh, price P. Now what we do here is that we're going to insert the price norm in our uh, equation. So what we get is key epsilon times mu over K times one over P. So one over P is key epsilon times mu over K minus sigma times 1 over p0. That's equal to f of x, 1 plus tau x, epsilon minus 1. OK, and so then I can rewrite this as key epsilon times mu over k, 1 minus sigma times 1 over p0 is equal to f of x, 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1. And so this is uh, this is going to be the key insight here of this analysis. You can see that so this so this is our solution. This is uh, the equation that gives uh, that defines x implicitly, of course, this equation. <clears throat> and so what you can see is that the crux is that this is the same equation that we have as when the price is fixed. So this same definition of x as um, 
as with fixed price. So if we had a fixed price P0, we would have the exact same definition of tightness X, except for the exponent one minus sigma. So that's the key thing here is that, oops, uh, this exponent one minus sigma shows up here in our definition of X and it wasn't there before. But otherwise the definition of X is exactly the same. But the thing is that because, uh, because sigma is strictly less than one, one minus sigma, it's um, strictly positive. And so as a result, what's going to happen is that shocks to key, to mu, to k, so demand and supply shocks, they'll have, exact, you know, they'll have exactly the same effect as before, uh, except that now they, are, they go through an exponent one minus sigma, but this doesn't change the sign of the effects. And, and therefore, tightness is going to move exactly in the same way as before. Uh, so this is going to be exactly the same effects as when the price was fixed. Except they are going to be a bit attenuated because key mu and p they are put to an exponent of one minus sigma, which is uh, strictly you know which is between zero and one uh, strictly. So if one minus sigma is one, then we are back in the fixed price case. But if one minus sigma is strictly less than one and strictly positive, then you are going to get you know the same effects as before, but slightly attenuated. Um, And so basically what you can, uh, so what we can see from this equation, from the fact that all the parameters enter in the same way, uh, is that the comparative statics under the rigid price will be just the same as the comparative statics with a fixed price, except quantitatively the, all the effects of shocks, demand and supply shocks will be attenuated. So the comparative statics with rigid price are same as with a fixed price. But effects are attenuated in the sense that, so in which end basically the elasticity of tightness with respect to, uh, you know, the dimension with respect to key, with respect to mu, with respect to k is one minus sigma times elasticity uh, under fixed price. So that's, you know, that's going to be the, you know, what's going to happen uh, in this setup is that the elasticity of tightness with respect to all the shocks uh, is just one minus sigma as the elasticity that we would have under the fixed price. And so, of course, it's quite close to one. If your prices are almost flexible, all the comparative statics are the same, but the effects are very, very small and they tend to zero as the flexibility goes to one. If sigma is zero, prices are fixed, and the elasticity are, of course, the same. So that's the, that's the key result that you see from this. The one minus sigma, of course, comes from the exponent that we have here. So that's kind of a nice. Uh, nice result and easy to understand. And graphically, we can see why um, the effects are going to be exactly the same. So we can actually illustrate that. Uh, so here is um, how the so here I'm putting tightness on Z. Horizontal axis, I know that my tightness is between zero and XM. And then what I'm going to plot is, uh, I'm going to plot this equation here. Um, so F, F of X strictly increasing, one plus tau X strictly increasing in X, epsilon minus one positive. So the so right hand side strictly increasing in X, when x is equal to zero, f of x is zero, so it's zero. When x is equal to xm, tau of x is infinite, so it's infinite. So here you know that you have 
the right hand side of this equation is just uh, something that looks like this, you know, so it's just an increasing function that's going to go to infinity here. So this is f of x, 1 plus tau x, epsilon minus 1. Okay, so that's what it is. And to find the solution, to solve the model, we've got to find uh, the x when f of x, 1 plus tau x, epsilon minus 1 is equal to this number that I'm going to put here. Or oh, actually, so it's... Uh, So it has to be, we know that it has to be equal to um, k epsilon mu k <coughs> one minus sigma one over p zero, right? So we know that that's what we have to solve. We are solving this equation. So the left hand side and the right hand side, they have to be the same. So here you can plot that and then the x that solves this. is just here. So this is x that solves the model, right? It's such that f of x 1 plus tau x is equal to this thing. And then when we do comparative statics, what we do is that we, uh, basically with comparative statics, you're just uh, shifting, you know, so if you have an AD shock, it's going to uh, shift up this curve. If you have an AS shock, positive AS shock is going to shift down. So, you know, uh, if AD goes up, this is going to shift up, and you will be maybe here. And then if AS, if AS goes up, this is going to shift down. And so you can see immediately what happens if AD goes up. If AD goes up, uh, you're going to move to this point here. So basically, tightness is going to increase. If AS goes up, Tightness is going to fall something like this. Um, this is X with AS up, and this one here, this is X with AD up. So you can see that when aggregate demand goes up, tightness goes up. When aggregate supply goes up, tightness goes down. Okay. So everything that matters to know whether uh, tightness goes up or down is whether the orange line that we have here, this one, uh, is whether this orange line is going up or is going down. Uh, so everything that matters is this... Uh, is basically what happens to this thing here. Uh, and But you can see that whether you have the 1 minus sigma or whether you don't have the 1 minus sigma here, qualitatively, this moves exactly in the same way because 1 minus sigma is between 0 and 1. And so whether your price is fixed and you have 1 minus sigma equal to 1, or your price is flexible and 1 minus sigma is between 0 and 1, the orange line, orange line move in the same direction in response to supply and demand shock. And therefore, tightness is going to move in the same direction. And the, what the rigidity does, so the sigma, the value of sigma between 0 and 1, that it attenuates this movement. You know, when prices are flexible, sigma is close to 1, 1 minus sigma is very small, and so the orange line moves very little, and x moves very little. When it's, sigma is very small, prices are really rigid, 1 minus sigma is close to 1, and the orange, orange line moves a lot, and as a result, um, x is going to move a lot. So here you see, you know, you see clearly um, why the comparative statics are the same, and also why... Uh, the amount of rigidity is going to uh, amplify or attenuate the fluctuations.